Good afternoon. Uh, I'm David Hiller. I'm a member of the ACE Northwest Committee and I'm an Associate Director at AREP specialising in acoustics. Welcome to this uh, ACE Insight webinar organised by ACE Northwest on Greater Manchester's Clean Air Plan. Some of you will have been expecting Megan Black to be presenting today, but she's now unavailable and sends her apologies. However, I'm delighted that we have Richard Banks standing in. Richard is a senior manager at TFGM. He's responsible for the freight program and has also undertaken a wide range of strategy and policy roles within the organization. He's been involved with the development of the Greater Manchester Clean Air Plan since the project's inception. Richard will present for about 20 minutes and that will leave us enough time for q and I'll explain how you can send your questions to you on the next slide. So repeat listeners, some of you will have attended these events before, um, so we'll be familiar, but it's good to remind everybody. Uh, the webinar is best experienced through headphones, which will help to cut out background noise. As attendees, you will automatically be on mute for the duration of the webinar. If you want to ask questions, please do enter them via the chat box and we'll come to, the, come to them at the end of the session. Don't worry if you miss anything, we will be uploading this presentation to the website in the next few days. So if you want to listen to again, you can. So now I'd like to hand over to Richard. Thank you, Richard. Yeah, thanks, David. Um, yes, yeah, as, as per the introduction, my name's, uh, my name's Richard Banks uh, from Transport for Greater Manchester. Um, the presentation that uh, I'm going to give now uh, is about 20 minutes or so, and it covers a clean air plan. But from, back from the, the very beginning and, 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 and taking up to the present. Um, there are a lot of slides and a lot of detail within them, uh, which some of it I will rattle through fairly quickly, um, but there will be plenty of chance to take questions at the end. Uh, anything I can't answer, I'll, uh, I'll respond to by email next week. Um, but next slide, please. So the reason um, Greater Manchester, like a lot of the um, other cities uh, across the UK is developing a clean air plan is, is, is regarding health. And you can see poor air quality um, affects health throughout throughout life from, uh, um, from pregnancy and low birth weights, things like asthma and, and lung function development in children, greater risks of coronary heart disease, strokes and asthma in adults. And then as we move to the elderly, uh, a, a range of different different ailments there. So that is the reason why uh, Greater Manchester and, and many other cities are developing, uh, developing plans within, with, within, their, within their city region. Next slide, please. Who has responsibility to, to reduce nitrogen dioxide? Well, that has been delegated to local authorities. Um, as a result of legal action, uh, European-driven legal action, the UK government has, has delegated this responsibility to, to local authorities. So they must address the, these nitrogen dioxide compliances and to, to reduce them to within legal limits in something called the shortest possible time. And additionally to that, we, they must consider implementing a clean air zone, and I'll talk about that shortly, unless they can identify an alternative measure which is effective in reducing these, this air pollution, this uh, nitrogen dioxide air pollution, at least, at least as quickly. Next slide, please. So what are the levels within Greater Manchester? So um, mod the modelling shows that legal levels of nitrogen dioxide would span across Greater Manchester uh, within, this, within this calendar year if, if no action was taken. There was some modelling produced a number of years ago by government which anticipate that around um, 11 locations uh, would see these uh, exceedances for nitrogen dioxide. Um, Greater Manchester did some additional, more detailed modelling, and in actual fact, we anticipated that over 150 stretches of road would be in breach of these legal limits for harmful concentrations unless we took action. So you can see from the map, it is, of course, uh, within the regional centre, within the, the city centre, but it isn't just that. You can see the, 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 the red in, in all the 10 local authorities within, within Greater Manchester. Uh, radial routes both into the city but also so, some more orbital routes as well so the the red is um, exceedance the orange is approaching exceedance and it's also worth saying uh, at this point i'll come back to this in the presentation that the um, 
responsibility of the um, strategic road network, motorways, etc. So those that highways England have responsibility to are not part uh, are not part of this clean air plan. Um, highways England has a different framework that it's working with government, um, and I'll talk about that, but that's a bit later in the presentation as well. Okay, next slide, please. So to to conclude, just the the introductory part, it, it's linked to a range of very serious health conditions, as I said, and it contributes to around. 1200 early deaths in Greater Manchester every year. We undertook a, a consultation uh, of which I'll talk about uh, shortly and there is some of, some of the uh, numbers that came out of that consultation. So we asked about uh, the boundary, the charges, the discounts and the exemptions of the of the clean air plan and the clean air zone itself and also the funding packages which help to support local businesses to upgrade their vehicles. Uh, we have already been awarded funded by government of uh, just north of 40 million and we're seeking uh, more than that uh, over 100 million for further funding alongside a hardship fund to, to support those considered most vulnerable of course since we undertook this process there's been an impact on covid government has instructed greater manchester to continue this and to, under and to undertake the consultation um, based, based on proposals uh, before the pandemic uh, we're, we're assessing the possible effects of COVID-19 and the clean air plan uh, on the clean air plan at the moment uh, and the questionnaire certainly asks questions uh, up on that uh, and the information uh, informs future decisions on, on, on each aspect of the, of the final the final plan and also importantly on the funding asset we're going to make. Next slide please. So just before I uh, talk about uh, Greater Manchester's clean air zone proposals it's just worth uh, identifying what the uh, different classes of uh, clean air zone are and these are prescribed by by government so there's four categories of clean air zones where drivers are non-compliant and that's the important fact that those that are non-compliant vehicles will pay a charge to travel uh, within a designated area so class a uh, buses coaches taxis and private hires those that are class b have an addition of heavy goods vehicles uh, those over three and a half tons class c adds in vans and minibuses uh, and class d um, identifies those that are uh, private cars and, and and motorbikes so the age of the different compliant vehicles is shown in, in the right hand column so we've got uh, cars and taxis uh euro six diesel for petrol van at euro six uh, bus at euro six uh, which is 2013 motorcycle at mobility euro three uh, Greater Manchester's proposals are for um, Class C. Okay, thanks, Janet. This just provides more detail uh, on those, uh, and I, I won't go through those now. But that, that's useful uh, reference when we send out the uh, send out the, the slide back. Thanks. So, as I mentioned, Category C is the proposal for. Um, Greater Manchester and it's largely coincidental with the Greater Manchester administrative boundary so that's a, a significant area going from uh, Selworth in the east and the east of Oldham all across to Wigan down to the bottoms of Stockport and the north of Bury and Rochelle so a significant area and excluding the, uh, the strategic road network so motorways and things, as, as I mentioned the time of operation would be uh, 24 hours a day seven days a week 365 days a year with a date of introduction of spring 2022 and it's anticipated we'd remain in full operation and at least, until at least the second half of 2026 so for four and a half years or so uh, the non-compliant vehicles as i mentioned hackneys uh, private hires buses coaches minibuses vans vans and trucks uh, and there's a ch there's a vehicle checker that's been set up to check whether your vehicle is compliant and it can be found found through that link thanks Janet. That's just to demonstrate the um, signage that will be pop and that will not only be at uh, the borders of Greater Manchester, but also, of course, coming off the motorway network at motor motorway junctions and, and, and things. Thanks. Thanks, one. So, what are the what are the proposed charges? So, there'd be daily charges applying for each day a non-compliant vehicle is within is used within the CAS. One one charge imposed per vehicle per per day. Um, and those charges are in, on the left-hand column there. So for, for hackneys uh, and private hires, it'd be at £7.50. 
for minibuses and vans at ten pounds, buses, coaches, and heavies at sixty pounds per day. Um, those numbers have actually changed since we had a, a, a smaller, more stakeholder consultation um, a, a, a while ago, and that's due to a better understanding of uh, vehicle fleets, really, and understanding the likely behavioural response to, to those changes. Okay, next slide. So to, to summarise uh, Greater Manchester's um, ask, you can see that in some cases um, we have received, you know, a, a, a significant way of the total ask, but in some cases, some cases we haven't. We're, we're still awaiting funded decisions on things like bus replacement and vans, uh, Hackney, Hackney taxes, including a try before you buy scheme and, and, and electric infrastructure for, for electric taxes. Okay. Just to cover where the timeline is and where we've got up to. So uh, as we go back to March 2018, we identified 96 measures in a long list and those that potentially could um, uh, reduce nitrogen dioxide to, to, to legal limits. We work with government to, to identify the problem, as, as I mentioned on, on the mapping slide, or something called target determination. The outline business case was produced in March 2019. Uh, we had a, a smaller stakeholder conversation on proposals uh, in, in, in spring of that year. And as we move on to the next slide, Jenna, thanks. Um, as we move on to last calendar year, where we've, we've refined the, the number of um, potential schemes um, down to, to, to a small, smaller number, development of uh, briefing notes and technical reports. We received a government response, which I'll, which I'll outline shortly. Um, and then um, a statutory consultation was held uh, in October, which ran for, ran for eight weeks. The consultation findings uh, will be reported, including, in, including COVID um, this, this calendar year with the final business case, Jim Clean Funds open as well, with the, with the switch on to, to occur in spring 2022. So government have um, directed us uh, ministerial direction to implement a category C clean air zone. They have, however, uh, that be switched on uh, spring 2022. They have, however, accepted Greater Manchester's case for a, for a temporary exemption for vans to 2023. They have provided funding for us um, to help support businesses upgrade, but they have said that they confirm no direct clean air fund support for softer sustainable journeys type measures and for some electric charging infrastructure. Um, they've said that they want to be kept informed of progress also on the GM minimum licensing standard for Hackney's and private hire vehicles. And that was a consultation we ran alongside Clean Air and relates to taxes and private hire uh, and not just environmental issues, but also issues of safety, uh, personal security and legality. So we ran that consultation as well. Next slide. There are some exemptions within uh, the clean air zone for different types of uh, vehicles, uh, for historic vehicles, those, those, those uh, regist built or registered more than 40 years ago, military vehicles and disabled passenger vehicles and specialist emergency service vehicles as well, of course, and they're, they're exemptions set by the government as we move on. There are some permanent local exemptions proposed by ourselves for uh, specialist HGV vehicles, such as those used in construction or, or vehicle recovery, non-going vehicles like agricultural machines, mobile cranes, other vehicles used by emergency uh, services, community minibuses, showman's guild vehicles, those driving within the zone because of a road diversion, a motorway closure, for example, um, and then disable tax class vehicles too. Next slide. And as I mentioned, some local exemptions from uh, the spring switch on until the end of that calendar year. And those would be for coaches and buses registered to a, a business address within GM and not, not be used for registered bus services. GM licensed wheelchair accessible hackneys and private hire. Those where there's outstanding finance and lease on non-compliant vehicles until the agreement ends on until New Year's Eve that year. 
um, vans and minibuses and those where there's a limited supply so the vehicle could have been ordered but not not yet not yet arrived next slide and finally, on this section, just to some permanent local discounts proposed by Greater Manchester, uh, where uh, five sevenths for private high vehicles under the assumption that they're used for personal journeys too, and then also um, where owners and registered keepers of things like camper vans, um, uh, motorhomes, those type of vehicles over three and a half tons, they can apply for a discounted charge of ten pound per day. Thanks, Jenna. So, how will we support? Uh, vulnerable groups well depending on your uh, vehicle individuals will be able to be eligible to, excuse me eligible for support uh, and be able to choose between a non-repayable grant to support the purchase leasing or running costs of a new or, or second-hand compliant zero emission capable vehicle it doesn't have to be new as a like for like replacement or a contribution uh, to the cost of financing a replacement through a GM scheme giving access to credit or um, funding towards CVRAT accredited retrofit where one is available and it certainly isn't av uh, available for all different vehicle types uh, but, it's, but, it, but, it, but it is for some thanks so for vehicle finance those eligible support will be offered access to a vehicle finance offer borrowing 90 percent of the cost for light for light replacement uh, with the cost of capital borrowed by the lender uh, not 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 greater manchester uh, the funding will cover mobilisation, interest and default, and applicant will be required to provide a 10% deposit, either by cash or, or via trading. Lending decisions will be sit with the, the vehicle finance provider, again, not with not with, not with with TFGM. Applicants re refuse vehicle finance will return access to a grant. So even before COVID um, started, we were anticipating a, a hardship fund um, of at least 10 million to support those individuals, companies, organisations who are most economically vulnerable to the charge. The consultation asked questions regarding COVID, in particular, in particular to help establish the amount of hardship funding that Greater Manchester needs to to, to help this 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 these sectors. Thanks, John. So the proposed support uh, for vans, um, it's a. Uh, a a grant of three and a half thousand per vehicle for replacement or, or finance contribution um, for a limit of 10 vehicles per applicant for heavies the grant is five and a half thousand um, or uh, a grant of up to sixteen thousand for retrofit so state aid implications might mean that we, that we might have to limit that to, to a smaller number potentially five vehicles per applicant and then different figures sixteen thousand per vehicle for replacement or retrofit of coach and minibuses a grant of five thousand uh, for replacement again so uh, depending on the different vehicle types and as we move on to the, the next slide you can see for buses that the, the different figures again uh, 16,000 for, for for buses happiness uh, different options depending on retrofit or whether uh, a zero emission replacement um, is, 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 is has potential um, and then for private hires again a, a number of different figures depending on um, whether the applicant is going towards a, a, a compliant petrol or diesel vehicle or potentially a hybrid or plug-in and so on and so forth. Thanks, Jenna. So uh, COVID, of course, a pandemic meant we couldn't do the consultation when we wanted in summer 2020. Uh, so the start of the clean air zone was delayed until 2022. Um, the government have confirmed that the, they want us to continue delivering the clean air plan and, and to give us guidance on how to how to proceed uh, and it has been confirmed that Birmingham and Bath are, are continuing with their clean air zones we, we switch on switch on this calendar year Thanks, Joe. so there's positives and negatives um, as to regard the COVID impacts on air quality and it's probably a bit early to draw any conclusions but in the positive column uh, there's been reduced peak congestion due to increased working from home, reduced traffic due to less business travel, perhaps less shopping, leisure travel, and possible shift to, to, to local living. Um, and some of those are, we might be able to bake in, but some of those are probably uh, temp temporary. Uh, in the negative column, there's certainly been halts in the production of new vehicles, including electric, less fleet turnover, passengers certainly deterred from using public transport and may switch to the car 
uh, and potentially also increase freight traffic due to due to switch to home deliveries. Thanks, Jenna. So for the clean air plan, the key benefit is to improve air quality and health, uh, and the success is, de uh, is determined whether it can achieve compliance in the shortest possible time, as I mentioned, with, with appraisals, uh, health impact and economic impact upon that. The COVID analysis work will include an assessment on the, on the pandemic, on the business's ability to respond to the CAS and any further support that may be needed. Next slide. Uh, as I mentioned, that Bath and Birmingham are, are, are switching on this calendar year. So Bath is uh, as Manchester, Greater Manchester Category C, starting in 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 March. Birmingham has got a smaller zone, but I've uh, we're anticipate switching on in the summer, and that is a Category D in that in that zone. That does include private cars. Bristol have consulted, um, and. Um, I think we're uh, waiting to see revised modelling before decisions are made. Uh, Leeds was a smaller zone uh, in Leeds. It was preparing to introduce a category B, which was heavies, but not vans. Uh, but they uh, concluded that's, that's no longer required due to fleet changes uh, and improvements within within the, 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 the fleet makeup within, within the area. They found that air pollution is significantly below legal limits and not likely to exceed again. So Leeds will not be proceeding. Next slide, please. So I mean, just coming to the end of the um, presentation now, the um, report to the combined authority in in, in December um, uh, reported last. Uh, so the consultation ended in December with the with the with the outline um, of the numbers in. Um, the January combined authority. Now it's it's too early to really glean too much information about the consultation responses, but there were approaching uh, 4,800 for the clean air plan and additional with for the MLS, which was the, the minimum licensing standards for the taxes and private hires. Um, so continuing to assess these at the minute and, and the impacts of COVID, uh, the important bulletin is decision makers will consider the, the clean air plan as soon as possible and by summer 2021 at, at, at the latest. Preparatory work is continuing for the zone in order to meet the, the, the very tight time scales and um, it's continuing to assess the minimum licensing standards as well. Next slide. Uh, I think we can move on. I think that's probably a repetition of just what I've said. Just finally, um, I talked about the strategic road network to so those managed by Highways England. Um, Thameside uh, Council have highlighted to ministers concerns around the A628, A57, that's around the Motcham, Hollingworth, Tintwistle area. So this route is managed by Highways England and brings uh, lots of traffic um, o o over the over the peak district. And it will be left without with with NO2 exceedances that are not being not being addressed. So government ministers are considering whether um, the clean air, potentially the clean air zones, could be applied to that, to that part within within the, the, the proposed CAS boundary, within the GM boundary. So we await that decision. And just finally, as we move on, the preparatory arrangements are um, delivered by spring 22. So procurement exercises need to be underway uh, with formal contracts expected to be made throughout 2021. These are for signage, manufacture, installation, management and decommissioning. Uh, a CAS service which would comprise uh, vehicle detection and processing using AMPR. Uh, handle queries for members of the public and integrate with a central government payment portal and a pe penalty enforcement service too. Uh, a debt recovery service uh, a clean vehicle fund service to administer the funds through an FSA uh, SEA, uh, authorised uh, service and air quality monitoring to supply, install and decommission the diffusion tubes at, at approaching 500 monitoring sites, monthly monitoring and provision of analysis to support the, the GMCAT programme. Okay, thanks. And that is a real um, quick race through how we started, where we've been and, and, and where we're going to. Um, as I say, we'll share the slides, um, but if, I'll, I'll just open my uh, chat now, and I think David, you're going to you're going to take that part. Yes, thank you, Richard. Fascinating, uh, very uh, informative uh, presentation there, with a, a lot of information coming through. 
Um, yes, we've had one or two questions come through in the chat, so I'll uh, I'll go through those now with you. Uh, anybody else? I'm sure we've got time for a few more. If if you want to ask any questions, then please do put them in the chat. They will be uh, uh, delivered anonymously, so um, uh, don't be uh, don't be put off by by thinking you might be pub going public. So the first question that came in, it says, uh, what targets will the local government set regarding the phasing out of diesel buses? And when will we see a full electric fleet? Uh, I think that's a really uh, interesting question. And I think that would be, I think that would be an am ambition of Greater Manchester, Greater Manchester. And I think the, 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 the carbon, the, the carbon ambitions, um, we, we do have them for, uh, parts of the key, key parts of the transport network, all parts of the transport no network. Um, I think funding for um, electric vehicles th through this um, was difficult as um, the funding was made available to achieve compliance, and for buses, um, compliance was set at, uh, at at Euro six. However, I think Greater Manchester's ambition would be. Uh, to move towards that, and the 2038, we've got a 2038 carbon plan, uh, a five-year environment plan, which sets a framework and the building block to 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 to, to do that. Um, um, so when will we see it? Um, I would I would like to put a date on it, but there certainly is ambitions within the uh, within the five-year environment plan to, to to move towards to move towards um, electric fleets. Um, in terms of Kat's second question, what happens? Yeah, I should have mentioned that. Kat. So um, we switch on at April 2022, and then there's the potentially there could be four and a half years of the um, clean air plan, uh, the clean air clean air zone. Now we we think that um, compliance could be reached within two years. So following two years of switch on, that would then give um, Two years, two years of compliance, and after that, so two years to reach, two years um, to demonstrate uh, compliance, and af then after then, if uh, Greater Manchester uh, so wished that it could make the case to the Secretary of State for Transport for 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 decommissioning, so that would be the that would be the timeline on that one. Okay, thank you, Richard. Um, Next question here is, um, what support is Andy Burnham giving for CAP, especially with mayoral elections coming up? Yeah, so um, Andy Burnham and the, the ten, the ten, um, the ten leaders are, um, you know, have, have been involved uh, within the the clean air plan from 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 the very beginning and i'm sure i have having discussions with national national government you'll see that the within the gmca um meetings and reports that uh, that there's um all 10 districts uh, are are working together i think there's been a of over, over a long term um in, and in particular since andy burnham is uh has, has been greater manchester mayor there's been uh an ability to work together to meet economic sustainability goals. So, uh, yeah, yeah, I, I would say uh, for all all political leaders in Greater Manchester, there's been significant support. Thank you. It's been good to see all those uh, individual districts working together to deliver this to bring this in into into being. Uh, how do you see that going forward in the future? Do you think there will continue to be that? Um, Cooperation. And yeah, I think I think that cover. I think that cooperation has. Yeah, I think that co cooperation has, has been long long standing, and I think it will. Um, I think it will continue con continue to do so. Um, transport strategies and many other economic strategies uh, within Greater Manchester are done have, to, have been done in partnership. You know, Greater Manchester ge geography, and you know, simply the number of local authority borders uh, means that. These types of issues have, have to be done in partnership and across local government boundaries and you know different political colours. But I, 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 that, that, I'm sure that will I'm sure that will continue. Good, good to hear. So then moving on to the next question, what have been the biggest challenges for CAP since 2018? What do you see 
biggest challenges will be going forward funding skills gap compliance uh, I think well there's this uh, I think COVID clearly had you know a significant impact it impacted upon the time it impacted on the timeline I think we were getting ready to um, I think we were getting ready to consult at an earlier time and because of COVID and the delays put upon that and the impact from the analysis um, I think the the biggest problems have been the the, the the very challenging timelines, not just Greater Manchester, but different, you know, different authorities that I mentioned on that slide there, to 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 go from um, direction a, a direction or an an, an agreement to 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 progress um, to model the model the uh, issues, the problems, and to from that to to switch on is a you know a, a very significant challenge in 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 the timelines that are that are being driven and um client earth through the legal body that have been um uh, that have been pushing it whether it's been within uh, european or at central government level and then down to uh level so they they understandably want to uh Ensure things have progressed as as soon as possible, as 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 the word in as the word in says. Um, but I think that I think the timeline is difficult. The funding, um, as 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 the slides mentioned, the funding um, that funding has been made available uh, by government, but but clearly um, not all different elements were funded, and some of them are still uh, s still in discussion, and, 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 and for some parts. Uh, a decision will 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 need to be made very soon because some of these it requires funding to be uh, distributed out to to help to help increase the to help improve the the, the fleet of the fleet on the network. Okay, thank you. Um, you may have covered it, and we talked you talked about um, funding. Um, will it will the scheme make a profit of any sort then, or is, is it? Is it likely to um, run at a loss, as it were? So the 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 the, the figures, the daily charges have been put in um, to uh, not as a not as a, a, a revenue generator, but to effect change. The, those are the levels that have been identified and calculated, modelled to effect change. Um, if there are any, uh, if there is a, a surplus, once costs have have been. Um, once costs have been removed, then that would be invested into the Greater Manchester Transport Network, and there's a there's a Transport Act that identifies how that how that how that would occur. Okay, thank you. Um, moving on to a slightly different subject now. Um, how are you integrating social value and community engagement throughout the timeline going forward? Uh, on the social value one, I must be honest, uh, I, I'm not sure on 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 that one. I think the Community en engagement is a is a, is an interesting one, and as I mentioned on the on the um, on the slides, there's been two stages of consultation, but that will that will that will that will certainly need to continue as as we go forward. Some of the groups, I think, um, are dif are difficult groups are difficult groups to reach. I think if we were talking about vans, old vans, for example, it's not. We got to remember it's not just um, it's not just people carrying parcels around, of which was many at the minute, but it's also people carrying tools around, um, trade, trade tradesmen, um, and um, I think uh, a challenge across all the clean air zones uh, that are in development at the minute is to be able to a, inform first of all inform these groups about forthcoming. You know the, what, what's coming, and then be to 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 engage. And I think to go back to your previous question on one of the one of one of the other challenges, I think I think that is a, a significant one. How what approaches, what media, how how do you how do you ensure that you're you're engaging with, uh, for you know for example, um, tradesmen, uh, people like taxis and private hires have got associations that you can speak to. Um, uh, console, engage with, etc. But some of those other groups, it's, it's, it is more trickier. Thank you. So through that route, you've engaged with the 
the uh, taxi protesters that uh, mm -hmm. made a noise about this earlier in the year. Is that is that right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Just looking at Rebecca's. Hi, Rebecca. Um, is there indication that the funding shortfall may be any of the funding? Sh um, I think I think the greater Rebecca's asked is there any indication of the funding shortfall may be met by government. Uh, I think the Greater Manchester leaders have 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 have, have, have been have been firm that um, uh, we do need to we do need the, the, these levels of funding to be able to to be able to help the the the, the vehicle fleet upgrade and um, you know the, the the scheme if 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 people can't upgrade their fleets. Um, it, it is difficult, and we, we, it's, it, it, it puts the thing. It, it just, just concern on the on, on the project, really. So, um, in terms of what the alternative is, um, I, I, I wouldn't have an answer to that. But I, 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 I think the Greater Manchester authorities have, have, have held firm that there shouldn't be a funding shop, shortfall, and that uh, we do need we do we do need all all the money to be made available. These approaches for funding, um, are they learning from and taking lessons from schemes elsewhere in the country um, to, to address those financial problem issues? Uh, they are, yeah. I do know that discussions um, discussions do occur with um, all, the, all the other authorities and our, and our um, colleagues met with um, Bath uh, and uh, Bath and North Somerset, I think is their, is their title. Um, you know, only last week on issues, but although there is uh, learnings that you can uh, make upon them, I think it's also worth remembering that the zone scale, the size of the zone for places like uh, Bath and a fairly central zone in 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 in, in Birmingham, you know, are, are much mu much smaller. Than the entirety of Greater Manchester, so um, there are and there are, I'm sure learnings that can be made, but um, you know, getting con con comparable, um, con you know, there's the, the, there's some comparable issues, but I'm, I'm sure in some cases there isn't. Okay, thank you. Um, going back to social value point, are there opportunities for local business to engage with the uh, the cap and social value aspects of that? Um, I think, yeah, I, I think that's that's sensible, Kat. I, mean, I think uh, it wouldn't be my field, and uh, the so uh, I, I uh, the the lead advisor, but of course, Acom are, are doing significant amount of um, work upon a, a with 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 Arup on on a range of different issues. So maybe uh, if we take that offline, and I, I will make sure that the right people uh, the right people see that. Thank you. Uh, just had another question coming at the bottom of the chat here. RGM concerned on slow progress on mitigation solutions offered from the SRN, despite government funding for five years being partly spent. In some areas of GM, 60% of NOx pollution is caused by SRN highways, strategic road network. I that's right. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. yeah, that's right. Yeah. Uh, I think. Um, I've not I've not seen those figures, Steve, but I, I I'm sure if you if you're saying them that that they're that they're they're correct. I think Greater Manchester has has been concerned throughout the process, given again given our geography, that um, if we don't um, you know if if Highways England have a different framework that they're working to with government, um, and there has been concern, you know, so, so some of the SRN you know, rubs up very close to residential areas. You know, for 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 for, for one issue. So um, there is concern, and we are working uh, as where we can with um, with Highways England on on these these issues. But um, I, I I do take the point that the 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 there there is con there is con you know a significant amount of pollution coming coming from the motorway network and so um, i know highways england are looking at potential solutions uh and that you know we need to we need to continue to work with them okay thank you 
I think that's the last of the questions on here. Um, just had one other point. I think your last slide possibly picked up on the various aspects of the scheme that will need to be put in place um, going forward. If there are people on the call interested in tendering for any of the uh, investment in infrastructure and signage and so on, uh, how would they go about um, tendering for that work? Uh, yeah, so the contracts are, are, are quite significant. I think something for like the AMPR is 200 and integ all those integration elements are, are, are north of 200 million and the signage is about 40 million by itself. Um, so we, I think we, through TFGM's general frameworks, we would, you know, we, there would be, TFGM is going to run the procurement exercises and a report will be made to the, the tent would be made to the 10 authorities. Um, and so um, if you've not got access to the the, the frameworks or the, the, the uh, how, how that might be achieved, uh, then please contact me and I'll, uh, I'll make sure I point you in the right direction. My, uh, just in case I didn't put my email on the slides, it's richard.banks, B-A-N-K-S, at tfgm.com. Okay, thank you, Richard. I think we've come to the end of the Q and A. Um, no further questions coming in now. So, uh, unless anybody has any final thoughts to add, um, I'll end there. Thanks again, Richard, for your really interesting presentation. Um, just a reminder that we've recorded this webinar, um, so a link will be sent out to you shortly. We've got a number more in, in this sequence of webinars coming up and they're displayed on the screen now. Um, other than that, thank you all for attending and um, see you next time. Bye.